Fennec Shand. Hello, Bane. You got no business messing with my score. You of all people know it's all about the price. Besides, she was my score first. Omega and I go way back. Don't we? Strong continuations are a rare occurrence in shows and movies I've found over the years. You have defining moments that dispel disbelief, like Infinity War and Endgame, Ahsoka's journey in Rebels, and the paintball episodes in Community. You are correct, sir! Then you have obvious shit like She-Hulk, Rings of Power, and even the fucking cliffhangers from every episode of Once Upon a Time that fail to actually do anything! What's the procedure? Say this continuation, though, is thankfully one of the strong ones. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. If you wanted a reason to unify the Star Wars fanbase, this is a prime example of what the years of world building, character developing, universe expanding stories can do. And uh, I gotta tell you, it was perfect. Perfect. This adventure brings action lovers, Mando simps, Clone Wars loyalists, and general enthusiasts of Star Wars under one roof. Let me indulge you and explain why. This one picks up straight off the embers of Crosshair's dignity as he tries to pursue the Batchers before they jet off into hyperspace. We then shift to Omega, who awakens in a cell, being escorted by Seth Green, and then is properly introduced to the man at the hour, Cad Bane. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She tries to reassure herself and threatens Bane in this moment, stating that her brothers are coming and they will find them. I will look for you. I will find you. Bane shuts this down in the most calmest of fashions and orders Toto to watch her. Bane contacts Lama Su and tells him that he got her. Lama Su, growing frustrated with Nala Se's involvement in all this, instructs Ton Wee, this Kaminoan from Attack of the Clones, I didn't even realise until they mentioned the name, and they even brought the voice actress back for this moment. Good for her! <laughs> He wants Ton Wee to meet Bane on their abandoned facility on Borovio, have Omega brought back to Kamino and extract the necessary materials from her, and then dispose of her. Excuse me, why? Back to Omega, who realises Toto was struggling to patch himself together again after Hunter shot his booster off during the duel with Bane. Oh, 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 my booster! She offers to help him in this moment, convincing him that she's incapable of doing anything to escape. You fool! Convinced that things wouldn't go otherwise, he lets her out, and she helps him in fairness, but then forces a shutdown so she can investigate and find the fucking comlink. During this, we cut to the Batchers, where Tech reveals that Omega is valuable to the Kaminoans for one reason, as she possesses the last vestiges of unaltered, pure, genetic DNA from Django Fett. <laughs> what?! Revealing both herself and Boba to be the same in this, and if the Kaminoans can retrieve one of them, they can continue the clone army, but at the cost to the lives of both of them. Fuck. After this revelation, cutting back to Bane, the tensions are suddenly heightened as we arrive on Boravio, but as Bane goes to investigate where Toto is, Omega takes his chance to escape the ship, and as she's wandering around the halls of this old abandoned facility, she acknowledges its structural similarities to Kamino and manages to contact Echo. She is, however, unable to maintain the connection, and Bane finds her soon after. As Bane drags her back, Torn Wee's body is dropped in front of them for dramatic tension. Hello, and welcome to Standing Up School. And you fail! Revealing an unexpected ally for Omega in this moment in Fennec Shand. Shand and Bane acknowledge a pre-existing history and go at it. Omega takes his chance to try and once again escape, as we see an impressive display of combat from the aging Bane and an upstart Shand. Fennec gets the upper hand for round one and finds Omega in front of canisters containing clones of Kamen Owens. Excuse me, why? Just before this, Omega managed to get an old satellite working, and the Batch moved to collect her. It's here where Fennec explains that the Prime Minister has sinister intentions for Omega, so she's technically there to save her. Omega, uneasy about this explanation, is quickly interrupted by Toto, who shoots one of the canisters and it drops a dead body onto Fennec. <laughs> Letting Omega escape again, but is pursued by Toto. Fennec and Bane engage in round two, with Fennec coming up short on this one. Fennec wakes up quickly though and pushes Omega out of harm, and they get into it for round three. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. 
With Fennec winning 2-1, to one, Toto is quickly defeated where Omega escapes on an old pod and takes off but quickly descends from the skies as the engines fail. God fucking damn it! Cue the Batchers stepping in at this moment and they get away together. As we close out, Fennec informs Nala Say that Omega is rescued by the Bad Batch and Nala calls Fennec off for now, stating that at least she's out of the hands of Lama Su. Bane is left stranded on Borovio, however, as Fennec clearly disabled his ship. We close on Omega having a breakdown and Hunter explaining why the Kaminoans are after her to begin with, and later comforts her saying that they won't let any harm come to her regardless of what they send her way. When Star Wars fans want involved content, this is what they mean. Good job. Good job. There's a bit to unpack from this, so let's start from the biggest. The largest of this obviously being the revelation that both Omega and Boba, formerly Alpha, possess the pure genetic DNA from Django Fett to eventually continue the clone army. For those eagle-eyed fans that do pay attention to a lot of the dialogue, you'll remember that at one point during the Clone Wars series, the Kaminoans do express concern as they are running out of the Django DNA. Django requested an unaltered son, but as it turns out, the Kaminoans made it work for them. The dastardly acts these Kaminoans commit and the lengths that they'll go to for recognition and money, including cloning themselves, are pretty fucked up. To know that Omega was just another means to an end for the Kaminoans, this strikes any connection that she feared losing with them before as we saw in Cut and Run. In that episode, she became tearful at the very thought of losing this part of her life as it's the only thing she's ever known, and she feared what it would do to her if she could never return. So to have this realisation would push her over the line of believing that they couldn't be redeemed. To know as well that Boba is essentially her actual brother, if you want to get pedantic about it, is an interesting addition to the history and lays the foundation for him and Omega to potentially meet up in this series down the line, adding a little more context to his history here. I love the idea that the Kaminoans haven't always been that way, though there are elements that stick with them, like the look of their facilities which aided Omega in finding a means out of there. Borovio itself was an intriguing addition to their history as galactic cloners. The grimy look and rundown feel was awesome and provided an excellent battleground for Fennec and Bane's street fight, as they had tight spaces to execute their moves in which heightened the tension to the point that you thought Bane was going to die when Fennec threw him off the edge. To see such an evolution to both Fennec and Bane, with one being the sprightly newcomer to the business throwing haymakers in quick succession against a wily veteran of the bounty hunting profession who was calculating and hard hitting, was all brilliantly executed in combining their styles. It made for some engaging combat and provided some context for the sense of familiarity that they have in the Book of Boba Fett, even if they never fucking draw up on it. The inclusion of the Bad Batch was sparse in this one, other than to simply rescue Omega, but that was perfect. We needed to see Omega's potential explored when she's completely removed from the Bad Batch itself, and as it turns out, she's learned from them in such a short time and she's very capable altogether. She incorporated her knowledge of droid mechanics in disabling Toto, then her size to escape the ship, the quick thinking and scoping to realise Borovio was like Kamino, and then using Toto to drop down to the lower platform in a stroke of genius however spur of the moment it might have been, but all collectively presents her as a capable young woman who is being thrust into a galaxy rife with animosity, hatred, war, and scum and villainy. The atmosphere of this episode was heavy and you could cut the tension with a knife. The delivery of the escapade was perfect, it had you shocked, worried and fearful as they reunited fans with Cad Bane and showed audiences that never knew him before what was so fucking good about him. It gave the live action fans a reason to come back for Fennec and allowed her to flex those skills that are limited in live action and just allowed Ming-Na Wen to provide us with a great vocal performance. This truly does give us an episode to remember, as it takes various parts that people love and bring them under one roof. Rewarding those that have watched the prequels, Clone Wars and The Mandalorian with a fight for the ages and an exploration into the lore behind what started the Clone War to begin with. I will always recommend this one to anyone interested in the show, but as usual I would suggest you go back and watch what came before it. That's all I got for now though, if you like this, aim that cursor at the thumbs up and click, then hit subscribe for more, and until next time, Take care, and may the Force be with you.